video with regards to a guide to fishing Chesil Beach and just to make you aware Chesil Beach is, is this one here all the way along um, I'm just going to focus on a particular area of Chesil Beach which is about in the middle um, so what we'll say it's a very exposed beach and so you want to do your research before you fish it for me if the swell is more than a meter, um, you probably want to give it a bit of a rest because it has a habit of um, chafing your line. So what you want to do, you want to have very long rods. Um, I don't know if you've ever um, heard of a sort of um, a particular fishing rod rest. You can use a thing um, called like a waratah where they sort of, it's like a six foot rod rest where you can bung your rod in that and that gives you some extra height to get your line above so you can fish in more extreme seas but you need to do your research um it needs to be fished relatively calm it's a very exposed beach this one um so we're going to start off in an area called abbotsbury which is probably the most popular area to fish there you drive through and there's a car park here um and um it's very deep water and um, you know it's close access I mean obviously when there's plenty of fish about and there's colder there this that and the other you know it's going to turn into snag city so you might have to find yourself walking along the beach quite a bit um, so yes yeah, so it's very popular you know chisels 80 miles long um, and the species which generally show up there um, Target species are obviously cod, your whiting, your undulate ray, your smooth hound, your bass, and the mackerel. You know, you might you might get a tote there in the summertime. Um, yeah, so it's just slap bang in the middle of Chesil Beach. Um, can get a little bit too popular when there's plenty of fish about. Um, it's a pain display car park. Um, at least it's somewhere, you know, relatively close to the beach where you can leave your car safely. Um, so yeah, um, so it's one venue that can fish especially well over the bottom of the tide, particularly for the cod. Um, a good type of fish is one and a half hours down to low water, three hours afterwards. Um, it's probably a good idea to avoid the really big tides. Um, they just make the fishing extremely difficult. Um, so, um, yeah, tactics for winter, typical sort of, you know, cod fishing sort of gear. Um, you know, they do say that you, you they, people who can cast well do well there. Um, I'd probably, I'd imagine, you'd probably want to be, if you're fishing long distances, you want to be fishing towards the bottom of the tides um, and on neap sort of tides stuff like that but for me it's um you wouldn't need to cast that far here to do quite well the key ingredient here is having some good bait fresh bait um from local dealers um obviously small hooks will pick off your smaller bits and pieces but you know like a 2-0 hook will probably get you the coddling um depends what sort of you know if this if, if, if it's a year when there's plenty of fish coming about coming out and they're good size you probably want up your, your hook size a bit but yeah, so again, the usual baits do well, your lugworm, ragworm, your peeler crab. Um, this is that and the other. Um, so your yeah, codling will start to arrive. Um, where are we? Um, codling will sort of start to arrive. Um, the end of August. Um, sort of build between September and October. Um, that's quite an early sort of coddling season so for people who are looking to get on the board with the coddling that's a good place you can go to try and get on the board early and it starts getting busy with the old coddling and the whiting sort of November and December January when sort of some bigger fish are there um, there's an area I think they call Dragon's Teeth and I'm not entirely sure where that is but that's a popular spot um, so yeah, it's um, all in all, it's um, you know it's quite a good spot, and there's definitely one you want to sort of um, 
you want to sort of partake in. Um, just to be prepared that you know if there is quite a lot of people there, you might have to walk quite a, quite a bit with your gear to sort of get away from. So you might want to invest in sort of like a beach wheelbarrow or something like that. Um, so yeah, it's um, you know again you know there's um, you probably in the summertime you get garfish and mackerel and there's all those sort of things you can go for as well. So you know any any time of the year, rock up. You know generally the winter species, your cod and your skate and stuff like that you know during, during the, the winter time whiting and then obviously your summertime species your bass i mean it's a good a bit it'd be a good beach to lure fish off um especially if you can find an area where there's a bit of rough ground and just will just work your way along um certain times of the year i would say metal spinners would be quite good off a beach like this um to pick off a, a real good bass um, and depending on how clear the water is, if it was getting close to sort of September, October, you might get a cod on on it fishing that way as well. So, um, so yeah, it looks it's a very very good beach um, to try some different things and maybe some tote fishing as well, some shark fishing sort of off there. So another um, another one, another spot along this beach um, called West Bexington. Um, so, yeah, that sat nav is DT29DG. And um, here, um, place sole, dams, small eyed rays, form back rays, mackerel and whiting. Um, so, it's, I don't think it's so deep as Abbotsbury. Um, it's two miles um, to the west. Um, yeah, it's just an alternative place to go, um, and um, yeah, it's sort of um, tides, um, as with most of Chesapeake Beach, key time to catch is when the tide is, is about to either slow down or pick up pace. I mean, if you tap into flatfish, rays, you know, experienced anglers will fish two hours before high water and three hours back. Alternatively, one hour before low water and the first two hours of the flood can be productive. Um, evening spring tides with high water in darkness is a prime time for winter whiting, if that appeals to you. Um, so, yeah, you, you know, it's um, beach, beach surf casters, you know, scratching rigs, um, one rig with a scratching rig and one with something a bit meatier, so to speak, you'd approach it that way. Um, yeah, and again, ragworm is a good bait for the flatfish on, on this um, beach. And um, small uh, lugworm is good as well. Um, if you want a ray, it's the, um, the, the, um, the sand ale is pretty good. Um, long things through the mackerel um, is good as well. Yeah. So, um, so there you go. Um, so that's that's Chesil Beach. It just gives you a bit of a an idea um, what that's like to fish. Again, it's a it's a big open sea beach, as you can see if you look at it, and you can get some monumental swells there. So if you're driving from the middle of the UK or whatever to go there, so do your research. I mean, wait. I, I would try and um, grab a webcam in this area around here. Just to see what the sea is like. Um, alternatively, you could go to swell map. For me, the swell on there wouldn't want to be more than a meter because um, it'll just grab your line and it will just chuck it in at the shingle and just sort of chafe all your line up. So you know, you, it wants to be fairly settled when you fit when you're fishing it. So you need the wind to come off the land. Really, easterly wind would be quite good there. Northeasterly, north, northwesterly. I don't know. Northwesterly. Don't know. But anything from the southwest, south, southeast, you would get smashed on there. Absolutely smashed. So again, just do your research, and um, you know, check the check the weather forecast. Go on the World Sea Fishing Forum and just check the catch reports. 
before you go. And um, and yeah, and um, I think there's a you know um, Weymouth round here. You better get your bait from Weymouth uh, before you go. If you do go down there and you do find that's not fishable, there is some beaches on the other side in here. Can't remember what it's called. Is it Osmington? Quite good for bass fishing as well, lure fishing around here. But there's a beach in here. If the swell's too much in here for you, you can fish, I think, in there's a beach in here. Not nowhere near as productive, but if you want to catch a few bits and pieces in there, there's Weymouth Harbour, you fish off the jetty. Um, I don't know what Portland Bill is like. Um, again, very exposed. Some good lure fishing for bass off here. Um, but I don't know what access is like along there. But if you just want to do some surf casting, Abbotsbury, West Bexington, um, and you can try up this end as well. You could possibly try up this end as well along here. Um, but there you go, there you go. So that's that's the um, the Chesil Beach guide. I hope you enjoyed the video. And um, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you. See you later.